from Eternal Food Evangelistic Organization, a unit of Eternal Food Ministry, welcome. Thank you for joining us on today's episode of the Bread Broadcast, where the Gospel is preached concerning, salvation by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. A sanctified Christian daily living through the power of the Holy Spirit. And an assured eternal glory for the saved, but eternal condemnation for the lost. Here to bring today's bread broadcast is, Josephine Zion Taylor. Today's topic is Doctor of Damnation. Doctor of Damnation. Our short reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 14, verses 5 through to 28. Exodus 14, 5 through to 28. And our case study is Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Let us pray. Dear Father God in heaven, through our Lord Jesus Christ, in the Holy Spirit, we thank you for who you are, a loving, faithful, kind, gracious, long-suffering God, merciful, Righteous in all his dealings with the sons of men. O oh, Father, we ask that by your Holy Spirit, this message will go out with clarity to make pagans understand the end game of this world, to make believers understand the urgency of giving the word of God out. And in the end, use this message to bring souls to the kingdom of our God, to the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. For in Jesus' name, I will pray. Amen and amen. Our foundation text is from the book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 1. The book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 1. He who is often rebuked and hardens his neck will suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. How does anyone end up to be a doctor of damnation? The story of Pharaoh showcases this topic because God tells Moses that I have made Pharaoh to gain glory over him because God knows that Pharaoh is going to harden his heart and refuse to want to know who the God of Israel is and what he's asking him to do. So that's how Pharaoh earns himself that um, evil doctorate. So how does anyone end up like Pharaoh to be a doctor of damnation? It is to be a number one, a beginner sinner. Please listen carefully. Pharaoh's sin started well before Moses showed up to deliver God's message. Like every member of the human race, Pharaoh was born with a heart that wanted to have his own way. We are by nature sons of wrath. That means we just want to do things that please us and displeases God. So by nature, we are sons of wrath or children of wrath. Pharaoh's heart of self-rule only became known when Moses introduced the true God to Pharaoh and told Pharaoh what this great God wanted Pharaoh to do. Likewise, please listen carefully. Every one of us will at one point be introduced to the God of the Bible. 
and be told what God wants them to do. God introduces himself through his invisible attributes, made visible in nature. I remember the story of the scientist when he went to the Grand Canyon and he said he looked at the Grand uh, Canyon and he said there must be a God to have created all this. This didn't happen by accident. And that was how that scientist became a child of God, you see. So he saw the attributes of God that cannot be seen in the Grand Canyon. And God also makes himself visible to every human through the conscience that he has put in our hearts, accusing or excusing each and every one of us. Or through the word of God that we preach. If you say you don't have a conscience or you are blind, you cannot see God in nature, at least you can hear the word of God, you see. And what God wants is for us to turn to him. That's it. Everyone may not have enough light to get them saved. But everyone has enough light within them to damn them. Oh yeah. You cannot say some uh, uncivilized barbaric people uh, in the middle of nowhere. How are they going to uh, hear the word of God? You don't trouble yourself with that. God has all the bases covered. They have conscience. They can see God in nature. They can hear the word of God. And they cannot escape any of those three, you see. So everyone has enough light to know that there is a God in heaven who has created all this. If anyone has placed, if anyone wants to know God and do his will based on the little light that God has placed in every human heart, God will send more light to such an individual through the preaching of the gospel so they can know how to be saved. You see, how, how bad just things are. If God has to allow a shipwreck for a missionary called Apostle Paul on the island of Malta, so the people of the island could hear the gospel, he will allow that shipwreck to, to happen. If God were to move uh, Philip to direct him by the Holy Spirit to leave the city of Samaria to go to the desert area in Gaza, because of the Ethiopian eunuch, he will do it. If he has to speak to Simon in a vision on top of a roof in the house of uh, 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 what's his name? Simon in, in Joppa, he will do that to go to Cornelius, the Roman centurion, to go and preach to him. So, do you don't worry yourself about that. If anyone, any pagan, based on the little lights in their heart, if they want to know more about this true God, God will of necessity send one of his children to show them more light. Hallelujah. A beginner sinner is automatically enrolled in the school of sin through our imperfect, sinful human nature. We all started out as beginner sinners because we are not perfect. We are sinful by nature. But a beginner sinner is presented with a readily available, God-given opportunity through salvation in Christ Jesus, hallelujah, to bail out of that school. Yes, you can get out of that school. 
You don't have to continue in that satanic school called School of Sin. No. Let's go to the book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 18. The epistle written to the church at Rome, chapter 5, verse 18. And I'm reading from New Living Translation for better comprehension. Yes, and as one sin brings condemnation for everyone, but Christ's one act of righteousness brings a right relationship with God and new life for everyone. In other words, just as Adam passed his sin unto every one of us through the DNA, the Lord Jesus, through his own act of righteousness, if you believe on him, he will pass his DNA of righteousness unto you in like manner. It's a gift you receive on your knees. If you flee to his heel, that heel is covered to be free from your sin. Joseph and Zion said that again. It's a gift you receive on your knees. You have to bow and surrender. If you flee to his heel to be free from your sin. Moving on. Body sinner. Pharaoh's arrogance and wickedness continued to grow daily because God kept giving him chances to correct his errors of not letting his people go. In other words, God was giving Pharaoh a long road to correct himself as he, of his madness. While God was ex exercising long suffering with Pharaoh's stubbornness, Pharaoh saw this as a game of catch and release that will continue indefinitely. How about you, huh? So it is with a body sinner. Because of God's desire that all men, and when the Bible says all men, it's talking about mankind, men, women, all right? It's not talking about gender. That mankind should be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. Many people have continued in their deliberate opposition of procrastination about getting right with God, believing in their delusion that nothing of eternal consequences will happen after all, because <laughs> nothing has changed since the world began. That's what they say, you see. A body sinner is storing up wrath for the day of wrath because of his or stubbornness and impenitent heart by consistently insulting God's spirit of grace through their resistance to the call of salvation. Each time you hear the word of God, you go, hey, this screaming preachers, here we go again. Huh, they've been saying, Jesus is kind. We haven't seen him. Well, I pray you're not in that state when he appears. Because if that happens, you are gone for. You're already lost, but you will be damned. If he appears and you're in that state, I pray you're not. I pray. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 8, verse 11. Ecclesiastes 8, 11. Because the sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. His patience may be matchless, and it is matchless, but not by any means Endless. Let me say that truth to you again. If you are a body sinner, listen. The dam 
of God's wrath is about to be is about to burst. And when it does, forget it. There's no more mercy. His patience may be matchless, but not by any means endless. Moving on. A bound sinner. Now you can see the progression of a stubborn individual or now they become a doctor of damnation. From beginner sinner to a body sinner. Now we are talking bound sinner. God knew beforehand that Pharaoh would not change his heart. He's omniscient. So your behavior is not a shock or a surprise to God. Forget it. You cannot surprise the God of the Bible. He knows you from the cradle to the grave. So it's your for your own good if you bow your knees in surrender and just say, you know what, God, that's it. Enough of this madness. So you don't surprise God. He's omniscient. However, even though God already knew the heart of Pharaoh, God wanted to let Pharaoh and his people see for themselves how vile and evil Pharaoh's heart was. The reason why you keep hearing the word of God over and over again, everywhere you turn, is not because you are so wonderful. God wants you to see how wicked your own heart is. That's your part. That you are a stubborn heart. That's why he keeps allowing you to keep hearing the gospel. So that in the end, you will know, you yourself, you will be convinced when God judges that, you know what? He tried. They kept preaching to me, I didn't listen. But I pray that won't be your end, that you won't have to live to regret in the end. I pray you change. That's my prayer for you. So God wanted Pharaoh himself and his people to see how wicked his heart was. Even Pharaoh's counselors, at a point they said to him, how long shall this man, Moses, be a saint to us? Let them go that they may serve the Lord their God. Do you not yet know that Egypt is destroyed with all this place? Keep Pharaoh. Are you blind? The whole country is decimated. Let them go. Leave them alone. That's how bad Pharaoh's obduracy was. His stubbornness. That's how bad it was. At this point, Pharaoh had become a bound sinner. And God had equally sealed Pharaoh's fate to give him the very destruction he wanted. Thus the Bible says, and the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. So it's not like Pharaoh was a goody-goody boy and God changed his heart to be hardened. No! It was after several attempts, hoping that he would change, and he didn't. God said, you really want to be destroyed, I'm going to help you. When God's spirit has stopped trying to convict someone of their need of the Savior, that individual has become bound to his or her sin, which means God has given up on that person. Such a heart cannot be reached by any amount of preaching, nor can any nice problem make such a person to look up to God. I wish I had the time to give examples of people that came to my mind. I mean, people that came, they showed up in the ministry needing help. And even at that, they will tell you, don't talk to me about that. Just give me the help I need. I don't want to hear about your God. Seriously. 
their heart has become seared. The conscience is dead, you see. Bound sinners are children of disobedience. VIPs in the postgraduate school for the lost. They have become a VIP in the postgraduate school for the lost. They're gone. Far too gone. That's it. The book of Romans chapter 1 verse 28. The epistle to the church at Rome chapter 1 verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting or which are not right. You are totally gone. When God says, done with you, you are totally gone. That man, that woman is totally gone. As they would say in the South, is gone. When God says, done with you, moving on, burning sinner, the graduation hall for a bound sinner is the lake of fire. This is where he or she is conferred with the degree of his or doctorate, which he or she has spent his lifetime or her lifetime accomplishing in ignoring God. That is where a bound sinner gets his or doctorate, doctorate degree. It is the final chapter of a depraved man that failed to heed the saving call of God at every turn. It is the supreme judgment to which there is no appeal and there is no impeachment of the justice of the God who has passed such a judgment on a bound sinner. There is no reprieve or relief for a burning sinner. Such a person will be in everlasting burning of hell, alone, cut away forever from the light and the mercy of God. The book of Psalms, chapter 9, verse 17. Psalm 9, 17. The wicked, that is a bad sinner, shall be turned into hell. I didn't say that. The Bible said that. And all the nations that forget God, to be self-bent is to be hell-bent. Let me say that again. To be self-bent is to be hell-bent. What have you done so far? How does anyone end up to be a doctor of their nation? It is to be a beginner sinner. That is, to be born a human with a sinful, imperfect nature, just as we all were. But you can get out of it. It is to be a body sinner. It is to refuse to turn to God when he reaches out to the sinner. It is to become a bound sinner. It is to be desired by the Spirit of, by the Spirit of God because of consistent refusal to heed the gospel call. It's to be a burning sinner. It is to end up in the lake of fire forever. Our foundation text speaks of some people who refuse to heed God and God equally gave up on them. Those are the candidates for a doctor of damnation, everlasting degree. God doesn't want that for you. Oh no. That's why you are listening or watching this lesson right now. If you are unconverted, you are ripening. You are being ripened from within. Let me speak to you in the words of one of my men, mentors, Charles Fogge. The depravity of your own heart is developing itself every hour. And the outward life grows 
words by a ripening process from within. The fermentation of your own depravity shall prepare you for destruction. Satan too is daily busy with you to try and make you grow in vice. He will leave no stone unturned to make you a beginner sinner to sit in the chair of stubbornness until you become a very doctor of damnation. End of quote. Last week, someone wrote things about what he's, he goes through almost on a daily basis and how he feels because of his health. Quote, I've lived with chronic pain for almost 10 years. I can honestly tell you, I think about suicide often. Many days, I feel like I'm a burden to my family. People on the outside look at us, please listen, and think we have it all. They have no idea the pain I'm in. The house, cars, and clothes mean nothing. End of quote. In the end, nothing else matters but your response to the call of salvation. Everything you are trying to get to gather, the money, the clothes, the cars, the houses, they are going to become worthless in the day of God's wrath. Don't you wait until that day. You can turn now before God gives up on you. A link is coming up. Follow that link. And we will meet you there. Dear Father God, I deliver the message you gave me. With all the strength, the unction and the function you have given me. Because of the urgency that it demands. Father, for as many that will listen and heed and go to what to know Jesus faith, oh dear Father God, meet with them. Grant them the understanding of what they are about to do. Let them know, oh Lord, that the world is on its last leg and your judgment is about to break forth. Open their eyes and Lord, as they surrender to you, receive them, oh Lord. For in Jesus' name, I'll be praying. Amen and amen. I will see you next week. Only if the Lord Jesus has not split the sky open. Jesus died for us all so we can have life. Come to him and receive life, believe on him and thirst no more. Good news reporting is all we do, seeing souls saved is our ministry.